Canada strongly believes that media freedom remains an important part of democratic societies and essential to the protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms. People need free media to provide them with accurate information and informed analysis to hold governments to account, which is what we at Métis Warrior Media Group do, is hold the Métis governments at account. The United Nations 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights states everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media, regardless of frontiers. Section 2B of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms states that everyone has the freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Métis Warrior here with Timothy and Alexandria. Hello everybody. And uh, we want to address some things that's been going on, some attempts to silence us. And it, it's very concerning when government officials want to silence us, want to silence you, the Métis people, from being able to hear the news on what's actually going on out there. Uh, Will Goudon has actually claimed in one of our shows that it was defamation. However, if you watch the show, and we double down on the show, by the way, uh, we're currently in a dispute about that, but we double down on it and put it on another platform. Um, if, if you falsely claim that we're defaming you by putting out facts on what you have done, then what you are doing is actually being slanderous on us and, and uh, causing defamation on us. So, not that his uh, complaints reached many people at all, uh, besides the typical 13 or 14 of his chapstick groupies out there that are constantly supporting him. But this very concerning when you have a government official who uh, would like for us to be silenced. And let me, let's, let's address some things real quick here. That when you give up your rights to, uh, to a Métis organization, they, they're drawing money on your behalf. Some of these people are getting extremely rich off of your Métis rights. <clears throat> and these are corrupt off of your Métis rights. And these people are misappropriating your funding. And I, it's a handful of people that seem to be okay with it. But it's thousands and thousands of people that are not okay with it. And we're going to make a difference. <clears throat> and what I want to say is, we're currently developing a website where all of our shows will be on there, where our communication with thousands and thousands of people will be a lot, uh, what you call it, faster. Um, there's another word for it. But we'll be able to expedite some of the shows, so uh, some of the stories. We will be getting the website out pretty soon for y'all. Now, keep in mind that there was no defamation. That was a slanderous lie that was against us and we stand behind our story 100 <clears throat> percent but when you go to will Gudon's post where he's bragging about the fact that there has been a defamation complaint let's understand that a complaint issued okay and when you look when you scroll through the comments there's one comment that got me where uh clem chartier says way to go will so he's congratulating will Gudon. Alexandria on actually silencing uh, you an MMF member from speaking out on the corruption and the uh, the fraudulent activities and the lies that have been going on for years and years uh, throughout some of the organizations that we speak on 
and 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 way to go, Will. That's Clem Chartier. How you feel about that? Well, you know how I really feel about that, and for a lot of uh, the educated, uneducated, pardon me, people out there that are claiming that I'm not Métis, I would recommend that you educate yourself. I've been a card-holding member of the Manitoba Métis Federation for over fifty. Years, so please educate yourself. And this statement really explains how I feel, and I'm I'm assuming so many others. When the MMF, MNC, and really any corrupt Métis organization blocks its citizens from asking questions, criticizing their government online, uh, anywhere, anything that the government, anything. That means moving forward, anything that the MMF, MNC, and any corrupt <clears throat> Métis organization says has lost all credibility. They are not accountable, they have no integrity, and the citizens deserve honesty, dignity, transparency, and accountability. So I'm angry as a long-standing citizen of the Manitoba Métis Federation. I'm blocked. Uh, again, there's many of us that Will are Goodbye blocked. has actually blocked you, but what he doesn't realize is there's people that's actually in his circle that talks to us and sends us things. So some of the same people that bash us in the comments section is actually not really for a will, they seem to, they, they, they have no problem sending us things. So, uh, they, they obviously, uh, talk negative, make negative comments on his Facebook wall. However, we do have an individual that, <laughs> that is sending us stuff. And, uh, we do appreciate that. And we will not release the individual's name because, uh, they've been very helpful in getting some of the conversations to us. And so, in the show that Will uh, claimed was uh, defamation, we were talking about his disrespect to the Métis women. Now, for all of you chapstick groupies, if you don't like the show and you don't like the story, then, then go ahead and cut the show off right now because you don't have to listen to us, period. This is for the people who actually want to fight corruption. And this is for the people who want fair and equal treatment. For all Métis people. Let me let me just tell you this. We have freedom of expression. Which means that we can express. We, we actually can express the, the facts. The way that. We have what's called freedom of expression. So some of you may not like the way we deliver the facts to you. But you can't dispute that they are facts. And so once you dispute they are facts. You are putting yourself out there for lawsuits. Because you're committing slanderous acts against us. And guess what? We have attorneys that have also stepped up to the plate and they're they're more than happy. They're so happy, actually. So they're more than happy to get lawsuits started. And we are working on some of those for the people that want to continue to slander and cause defamation on us. But let's talk about this. We present the truth to you. And in this show for and then we gave people time to go ahead and shut it off. If you don't like if I didn't like a show, I wouldn't watch it. Well, you, you're in control of what you listen to and what you see. So yeah. it's all in your hands. So if you don't like something, just don't listen. Just don't watch. And there's just better things to do in life than to watch things that you don't like. So check the hell out. I mean, go ahead and just go ahead and click the stop button and stop listening. For those of you that do care, keep listening. And so let's, let's look at it this way. So one of the things that we were talking about in that show was the disrespect of the Métis women. That Will Goudon has done. This is a fact. You can see it. It was in the video and it's still in the video. It's just up on a different platform right now as this dispute is happening. But in this video, you're going to see additional video of and you're going to we're going to have a very special guest. Uh, the guest that we're going to be having today is Miranda Morin, and you're going to hear it right from her own words. She was at the event. The event that we're going to be speaking to about is the MNLA, the Métis Nation Legislative Assembly in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. So she was right there. Right there, and she, and she was one of the Métis women that was disrespected. And uh, you definitely want to pay attention to that. And you're going to want to watch the video, the actual video that we're going to have in this show where you can see with your own eyes. 
So what we prevent, uh, so what we present to you today is the facts. So pay attention. And so I want you to pay attention. It's facts, folks. This is facts. You cannot dispute facts and say it is defamation because that is not true. We are the Métis Warrior Media Group, and we have a right to present to the people the things that are happening in different Métis organizations. And so Will Goudon has uh, took it upon himself to go out there and slander us and put out false statements on us by causing us uh, by saying that we're defaming him. Now, if your actions are so sickening and disgusting, Will, that you think that by hearing it from a media outlet, but by the way, you're not used to that because you have the chapstick media out there that are willing to kiss your ass and throw you softball questions. So you're not re really used to hearing a media outlet on the level that we are actually uh, go out there and question you on some of the things that you've done. So then what do you do? You turn around and you accuse us of committing defamation. And so understand for sure. We stand behind our stories. We back up our stories and, uh, and you accusing us of that is actually slander against us. And you as a government, Métis government official, what you should be doing instead of slandering the Métis, is what you should be doing is representing the Métis, whether they for you or against you. And you cannot dispute video and actual factual evidence that we present in the shows. You can run to your chapstick media, your ass kissing media that's going to put out your side of the story all you want. But all we're doing is we're questioning some things. And if you want to come on to our show, Will, you can come on to the show. And you can answer any of the questions at any time. Clem Chartier, the cheerleader for Will Goudon, when he when he definitely uh, went ahead and put out his comment, way to go, Will, just like a cheerleader right there. And, and you know, my thing is this. You, Clem, you can come on to the show, too. We love that. And we're not, we're not done doing stories about you, my friend, because let me tell you something. All that audit stuff, why? Here's a question, Alexandria, that we need to pose to the people. Why did Clem Chartier jump ship after that damn audit on the MNC? Why was he jumping ship? He was jumping ship. He was abandoning ship because he knew when you look at that audit and you look at the things that appear to be very, very criminal, and, and we're going to do another show that talks about the audit where... They couldn't even call it an audit because the whole thing is they went in there to look at the financials and they have questions about the financials where different fonts were used on the same forms. It's different font types. So there was uh, truly things that were very scandalous, uh, shady, and appeared to be rigged up paperwork. And that's going to be an upcoming show when we're going to focus on Goudin's cheerleader, Clem Chartier. And so we're going to definitely want y'all to uh, stick around for that one. But why would you think somebody would just run? People ask yourself that from the MNC. He knew the government was looking at this. He knew the government's looking at this financials and like, what the hell is going on here? Well, I think, folks, you should ask yourself this question, it's, and it's as plain as day. And, you know, the old saying is, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. But we all know it was all over mainstream media that Clem Chartier stepped back as his role as president of the MNC. Yet, you, if you go to the MNC website, he's still giving a monthly president's message. So... The hell is that? You're having your cake and having the icing and eating. So either you've stepped back or you haven't. So really, that's not being truthful and accountable and credible if you say to the mainstream media, I'm stepping back from my duties as president of MNC, yet on the website, you're giving a monthly president's message. So either you are or you aren't. Well, let me explain to you the theory behind that. We, we, were, we were definitely doing stories about the MNC left and right. He was jumping ship, no doubt about it, jumping ship from the MNC. I mean, that was it. You know, we, we backed off from doing stories about the MNC. And if you notice, he's, he's kind of st slid and stayed in there. And and uh, and like you said, been issuing president statement. So, yeah, what the hell is really going on? 
And so if you're going to jump ship and leave, leave then. Don't stick around and be given presents. The thing is, it's all about financial control. It's all about greed. It would have to be about greed if you think about it because is there not money still coming into the MNC? Absolutely. And again, it's all about using collective rights. Uh, they're controlling the power, the money. And for people that maybe have a hard time comprehending or understanding, I, I'm going to say it. I've been a long-standing member of the Manitoba Métis Federation for over 15 years. I have a right to question my government, to ask questions. I've asked questions trying to reach out to Will Goodon via phone doesn't pick up the phone that is my right to question my government and you're going to see again in this show when we speak with Miranda Morin who is in Saskatchewan she is going to really this is her experience where Manitoba Métis Federation Will Goudon has mistreated Métis women and also mistreated Métis veterans and this veterans, is veterans and, that's the and this is part. a guy uh, Gabrielle Dumont Institute uh, I, I, I'm speechless. You are giving an award to an, uh, an individual that has mistreated, and we show you the proof where he's clearly mistreated Métis women, clearly mistreated Métis veterans. And so there you go. So for the for his for his chapstick groupies out there, they like to follow him they around. They must be okay and, with and, that. And, yeah, yeah, they're okay with him mistreating women. They're okay with him mistreating Métis veterans, and they're okay with him trying to silence us, a Métis news outlet that is fighting corruption, asking for transparency, and the fact that they cannot control us. They can't control us, and the, and, the, and that's eating them up, man. They can't control us. You know, we got some huge numbers, and they can't stop us. They can't just, they can't silence us. They've made attempts to silence us, but they're failed in their attempts. We're going to keep fighting against corruption in Macy organizations, not just the MNC and the MMF misappropriating funds, but other organizations as well. And so this is a shocking show, folks. Pay very close attention. But before we go into the show, and uh, you'll hear it right from uh, Miranda Morin, and we commend her for coming on the show. And this is just another way how very powerful mate. Uh, Powerful Métis men disrespect Métis women on a regular basis, and you'll hear her say this, and it's shocking how uh, David Chartrand, uh, MMF David Chartrand, talks about how we should respect Indigenous Métis women, and you'll, uh, you'll hear her say that Marianne Morin, who is the treasurer of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan, was never given a chair left to stand up, yet Chartrand is flapping his mouth that we should respect uh, Métis Indigenous women and Marianne Morin wasn't even given a chair. So you're a being a hypocrite. Oh, he disrespected other women there too, besides Marianne Morin, clearly. And, and 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 obviously, you being a Métis woman, he's disrespected you as well because here you are, co-host of the Métis Warrior Media Group, and uh, it, it's very disappointing that they would fight against the show that is uh, out there for unity. We're seeking unity and peace among all organizations, but we're fighting the corruption uh, for transparency. And so my, my whole thing is there's a thing called political comedy. In some of our shows, we will put out political comedy. This is freedom of expression, folks, and we, we got a right to do that to government officials. I mean, people do it all the time. We're going to put out political comedy, but in our shows, it's very serious. And in the shows, it's... Uh, it, 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 we, we present you the facts, and it's very important that if you're going to listen to the show, listen to the entire damn show. Listen to the facts, because when you go on social media and you claim our show said something that it didn't say, you're actually being slanderous against us. And for those people, consider this actually sound device, very sound device. I would watch the things you post about people on social media that is not true because that is slander and that is defamation. You may not like the fact that we're exposing corruption and fraud, but that is facts that we're delivering to you, the Métis. 
and we do this for the Métis people. And before again we head into our very, very special guest, I'm going to say this very slow in case people are not listening or can't understand. As a long-standing member of the Manitoba Métis Federation for over 15 years, I have a right to question my government, my organization on what they are doing, what they're saying all over social media. That is my right as being a cardholder member. And I'm noticing that a lot of the chapstick groupies are not even from Manitoba. So I'm not sure. Well, hell, one of them's not even Métis. Why you're... She's out there running around trashing you and uh, trashing this Métis show on Will Goodine's page. She's See, not even Métis. Get a life. So you got to question why a lot of these chapstick groupies are not even from Manitoba. What's in it for them? I don't know. Get a life. Do something productive in your life. Besides out there into something that's none of your damn business. If you're not Métis, none of this affects you. Stop uh, commenting in, in the fact that Will allows this on his wall. And it's, it's insane, especially since they got a bogus homeland map. That bogus homeland map, uh, they fight against people who claim to be Métis. Yeah, he's got a, a, a known non-Métis attacking Métis on his wall. What kind of sense does that make? Well, good night. It, does that make sense to you? And again, uh, I have a right to question why my Métis organization, Métis government, continually uses non-Indigenous academics. I have a right to question that as well, folks. And these are political figures. So even if Alexandria was not a card-holding MMF members, we are... We are a Métis media outlet, and because of that, we have a right to cover and bring you the stories because we're the only ones that's going to do it. We're the only ones that's going to bring you certain stories that other media won't touch. Yeah, that's us. We're the ones that's going to do it. So listen to our interview with... Uh, our interview with Miranda Morin from Saskatchewan. Hello? Hey, how you doing? This is Timothy and Alexandria with uh, Métis Warrior. Hello. Hi, Miranda. How are you this morning? Good. That's good. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to give you a gist of what happened, okay? We put out a video. Alexandra's probably already told you that uh, we put out a video, and we had y'all's story in the video, and we had, uh, which is a fact. I mean, it happened. There's video evidence of that. And then we had uh, we had the, uh, the, the, the thing where he admitted he tried to infiltrate the MNBC AGM which was a fact so he filed a uh, or he or somebody else that he knows filed a defamation thing and we're in dispute with it right now because uh, he he can't do a lawsuit because it's factual but what it is is he tried to sh silence the video so the vi video is not available in Canada right now and so we're waiting right we appealed it and yeah no those things were all facts like what he did so i don't know how he was able to get the video taken down i did notice that yesterday that he was all proud of that, that he got that video well yeah he he definitely is disputing that he disrespected metis women at that event and he's disputing that uh uh i mean he, what what he did by what he or somebody else we're waiting on the name of the individual that done this but what he or someone else done by by saying it was defamation, they actually slandered us. Because, now, what he didn't like about the video was our delivery of it, of the message. But we have freedom of expression. Can you just tell us a little bit about what happened uh, that day uh, the, as we represented in the first video we did? But a little bit of your experience from the, the event as, as far as what happened that day? Okay, so we went to the MNLA and we had all ran in the election and we supported Marianne. Um, a, lot of, a lot of women voted for her because she had um, an educational background uh, in finance, so we really wanted her to be the treasurer, right? And um, they kicked her off the board prior to that MNLA and they said that she had resigned. Um, but she was adamant she didn't resign. There was, you know, she went to the press and everything. She was adamant she didn't resign, right? Right. And um, when we got to the MNLA, um, Marianne tried to join the executive um, because she's still our treasurer, right? Right. And um, they, 
you know, Glenn, uh, that's our president, uh, you know, they were being snobby to her and like telling her she's not allowed there and stuff like that. So when the meeting actually started, they didn't give her a chair at the, the head of the table, but she went to the head of the head of the table and she stood there for a really long time. Now, no one um, recognized her. Um, if you see in that one video I sent you, David Chartrand's just talking about, you know, how he, uh, how he, uh, um, he's so great to women, and yet Marianne's standing right in front of him, not being offered a chair. They're all being ignorant um, to her, you know, stuff like that, all of them. And Will Goodon and David Chartrand were at our MNLA because here's where they were going to launch their framework uh, agenda. Mm -hmm. So there was also uh, dignitaries there, right? Like, um, you know, the federal government, uh, the government, uh, there was a whole bunch of people there, the mayor, um, everything. And they had this, like, um, they had these things set up so only executive and the table could go, like, into the center of the room. Um, I don't know what you would call them, you know... Uh, just something at, like at the movies, you know, a line, I guess, right? Right. We couldn't cross it. Uh, so the rest of the public had to sit at the back, like all the people. So, so that's how this meeting started off. It started off with uh, disrespecting Marianne right at the very beginning. So they decide that Will Goodon is going to chair this meeting. So he gets up there to chair the meeting. And, and the number one thing he says to us, this was the first thing said at the MNLA. Listen, if you guys don't like what I'm about, if you guys don't like the decisions we're about to make, take us to court. There's nothing you can do about it. Wow. Wow. That's arrogant. That's, and, that's disrespectful. Yeah, I mean, so so basically he's up there. He's supposed to be representing people. And what he does is basically, and, and he, he tells y'all, if y'all don't like what he's about to say, take him, kiss his ass and take him to court. That's essentially what he said there. And so uh, that's the attitude that this guy has, and he definitely should resign and not be in the position that he's in. But please and, go ahead. But I'm I think sorry. before and, you and go, you know, that was the tone of the meeting. That wow. was the tone of the meeting because as soon as he said that tone, they just steamrolled uh, all these motions through. One guy got up and made a 146-page motion um, that no one even read, and uh, it was all passed. You know what I mean? It was just ridiculous. You know. So that's happening. corruption. They weren't letting the Métis people talk against the motions. Mm -hmm. They were but, shutting down mics. Wow. So as soon as Tom Isaac got up there to speak, okay, so I researched Tom Isaac before we went to this meeting because MNS, the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan, hired him, and uh, I just wanted to know why. So I looked him up, and um, he his background was he's Stephen Harper's right hand man. Wow. <laughs> That's who he was. And he wrote and he started writing this um, extinguishing the rights of indigenous people way back when he was working for Harper. Jeez. So as soon as he gets up, he starts talking about my section 35 rights. Oh, like he gets to talk about them. Well, then I just lost it. I'm yelling from the back. I'm like, who gave you permission to talk about our section 35 rights? None of us did here, right? Right. Um, they were calling that disrespect. Uh, obviously, I was being disrespectful because he was very disrespectful to come in there and start talking about our rights. Like some, you know, just government official, not a Métis, not Indigenous at all. Just gets, and oh, and he told us all... Your Section 35 rights is an empty box. We need to fill up the box. Well, actually, he started the tone of disrespect when he told y'all, if y'all don't like what we're about to say, uh, take us to court. There's nothing you can do about it. That's so what Will Goudon said, not yeah. the other guy. No, I know. Will Goudon. Yeah, Will Goudon. Yeah, Will said that. And yeah, that was total disrespect, right? So we already knew um, we were just going to get steamlined in this uh, MNLA and at the AGA, right? Yeah. We knew it right from the beginning. But you know there what? There's other locals there too that were being. Oh, so so here's the other thing. You know how they just uh, made like the Eastern Métis extinct? Well, right. They did that to locals in Saskatchewan too. So if there was locals, they just um, they got to vote and they got to come to the MNLA, but they weren't recognizing them now anymore. They're just not recognizing them. They're gone without a discussion. You know, they're just gone without consulting the people or call, consulting anything. And I think what you said earlier really uh, bothered me when you know uh, David Chartrand is the president of the MMF and here he's uh talking about being respectful to women and i think the part that really bothers me the most is marianne morin is there standing and not even being offered a chair or a seat and he's uh 
shooting his mouth off and being a hypocrite about being respectful for women and there is uh you know the metis nation of saskatchewan treasurer standing there and no one is uh, offering her a seat i mean what kind of respect is that for metis indigenous women by a leader mm -hmm. yeah and that's what i'm saying this is the kind of respect that metis women get all the time and so uh but, like this is it this is the like i mean this is it like the, we always get treated like this and i don't understand so even when marianne resigned i asked clem and david and will because that we went to an mnc meeting in, in july she didn't resign but when they said that i asked them all hey would you guys meet with us just so we could to, like sideline and talk about this so you know so that i wouldn't have to make public posts about it right right i just asked them like i asked them straight out we were just all together in one room and i said hey would you guys meet with us and like you know just discuss the concerns we're having right before we just jump into framework and stuff and uh david said right away clem those are the girls against glenn um don't talk to them Good. And I said to Clem, Clem, listen, like, we need to talk about this framework. Like, you already signed it, but nobody talked about it, right? And you know what Clem Charche said to me? What? I didn't even read it. Wow. They stay, so, so right here we have, a, we have a witness to this conversation that Clem told you he didn't even read it. And so, uh, wow. Yeah, he didn't read the framework, but it was already signed. It was already signed. It's all about the money. It's all about greed. Yeah. And the more people That's they can eliminate, the more money they're going to be able to put in their pockets. And they show no respect to the Métis women at all. And for him to say that we were being slanderous or defamatory by saying that, we have have Métis women who have been disrespected by these people. And so we oh, reached yeah. out to Glenn McClellan, uh, Glenn McClellan. Glenn McClellan many times. And uh, he's refused to even answer our questions. So after that MNLA, because it got so dirty, and I mean, it got dirtier than that. Like, so well, I'm being disrespectful to Tom. Um, um, Will's yelling at those two veterans, uh, the, the scouts, right? Right. Um, he, he disrespected the veterans all day because he kept sending them back to me to, to talk to me. Well, to have me removed. He wanted me to re be removed. Mm -hmm. And all I told the veteran is, listen, you fought for our country. That's exactly what I'm doing here, right? Right. So that's why he shook my hand, right? And so right, and what, what I like for people so to Clem, see... Our, I mean, Will kept disrespecting those veterans. Eventually, we gave the veteran a chair at our table and some water. Because you guys can see in that video how old that man is, right? Right. Yeah. And, so, and yeah, and Will kept sending him back there like Will was the boss of him. And then Will even came to that line like where we were at the back mm -hmm. and he made the I'm watching you with it, you know, the fingers to the eyes and to me. He was doing that to me. Good grief. So you know what? Yeah, you, people had to hold him back. He was actually going to come at me. People it, were holding him back. So Will, Will Gudan, like hold, hold on, I want to I make this clear. So you're saying Will Gudan was trying to physically attack you? intimidate me physically intimidate you up. yeah to shut up and that's yeah. exactly and what I he's done i wasn't putting up with that bullshit i laughed at him i was laughing back there oh he was losing his mind well, who, ne who in the hell is Will Goudon? Here you have Will Goudon, and this is the start the thing that makes me just uh, my stomach uh, turn is that recently he was uh, awarded the Gabrielle Dumont Institute silver medal and here's a, an individual that on a regular basis uh, intimidates, disrespects Métis Indigenous women as well as disrespecting Métis veterans. And he gets a medal? He gets a medal. And let's talk about how, how, how shady that is for the Gabriel DeMond Institute to do that. I mean, that, and I, I wonder, one, it does Will hold financial interest in the Gabriel DeMond Institute? And two, have, has they, have they made any financial contributions to the Institute? Because that, in fact, would be the equivalent of buying. Well, that's a money. conflict of interest right, right there. And you know why we can't find out, honestly, is because when we look up these privacy, uh, like these information, right? When we look up, when we get it back, mm -hmm. um, all the Métis corporations, all the locals, so, you know, MNS and uh, MNF and MNA, they have a bunch of numbered companies, tons of them. Well, we don't know which is which. They're just laundering money back and forth to each other. This is how none of the money ever goes down. And it is just original families, like who they say is the original. Right. I mean, that's really um, And stupid. I don't even know who those are because, like, come on, we're from the Grand family. Like, if anyone was going to be original here, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it would be from, like you I said, mean, the Grand family. We don't get any, you know, 
we've never asked for anything either. We just want them to be, um, I don't want anything from them. I just want them to be good to the people that need them. Respectful. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and, and I think what I would like to encourage everybody to do is kind of like what you're doing. You're speaking out and you've been speaking out for quite some time. People haven't heard you because Will Goudon has been successful. Not just Goudon, but Chartier, Chartrand. They've been successful at silencing people, which is uh, what someone tried to do with our show. And by the way, for the people out there, we've actually re-uploaded that show on another platform. And uh, so that, that video, we stand behind it 100%. It is not defamation at all. And uh, for those people that support a man that disrespects Métis veterans and that disrespects Métis women, how in the hell? And this has got to be people that are some kind of way financially benefiting or hoping to financially benefit. All, all Métis should be treated equal and fairly. And it's only some that's getting rich, and that's wrong. And you know what? I, I wanted to ask you, Miranda. Uh, there was a there was a claim. Could you to, could you uh, tell our listeners who made this claim? They claim that you made a kicking motion to a veteran at the uh, MNLA, and, and in fact, uh, in the video that uh, we viewed, your legs are crossed. So who made that claim that you supposedly um, kicked a veteran? See the veteran standing behind me. Um, right. in that video and uh -huh. his name is Felix Morasti. Okay. He never he never fought or anything. He's just a cadet. Right. Um Felix Morasti from the north got up on the mic at the AGA the next morning and before anything started and said, "Um I want Miranda removed from the meeting because I watched her make a kicking motion to the veteran yesterday." Um blah blah blah. And uh and then all of a sudden um Will and Wendy Jarvey stood up and they're like, "We're calling the cops." Okay, so but but here's a here here's a, here's a man making a false accusation against you, saying that you kicked at a veteran, and we know that the person who supported uh, actually stood up and said, "Let's call the cops." And, and by the way, Will Goudon is good for running to the colonial system. Let's make that clear. So he wants to call the cops on you after he's disrespected Métis veterans himself. And, and you you did not actually kick at the veteran. Can you explain exactly what happened there? So you can see in the video, and it's a good thing someone was video recording this, or I would have went down on, I would have just been known as the person who tried to kick the veteran. Um, so thank God someone was videotaping when he came back right. to talk to me seven times. But anyways, um, the, the thing was is that I crossed my legs after he he walked away so so maybe that veteran maybe the other veteran behind our table thought he seen me doing something like that but if you see in the video from the front angle of me i just cro i simply crossed my legs after do we have that video yeah you have yeah. that video yeah. okay okay i haven't seen that video all right so yeah, uh so you can see you can see in the back feel like morasti is standing way out in the back you just see his head with his little um, cap on you know yeah. it's the veteran and uh so the very next morning he said that i tried to kick the veteran and it was because i wouldn't leave right it's because i was being defiant and 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 whatever i just wasn't going to leave that meeting right well let me ask you this when uh, and you know there's so many and it ain't so many you got about 13 or 14 people who go around uh, trying to trash other people that's speaking out against corruption? They support Gudan, obviously, and and I don't know why they support somebody when we when we actually presented evidence of fraud, of disrespect. We present the evidence, and these people just don't see it. They they choose not to see it. They choose to support Gudan no matter what. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn to the colonial system that Gudan likes to use so much. And uh, we're going to reach out to Bennett's office and some other places, and we're going to uh, ask them how in the hell can can all this happen? Like you said, motions were getting passed. They didn't give a crap if the members knew about it or anything. And in the video that we displayed in that in the Goudon video that he's 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 uh, trying to get where nobody can see it. In that video we showed, uh, I think it was Marianne Moore yeah, was Mary saying. Hey, you know, we, we can't understand this. We need time to understand this. And they just, like you said, steamrolling through it. They're not trying to give people time to understand it. And that's wrong. Right. And what you need to know about that original video is that didn't happen until they said, we're calling the cops. And then Will came to the mic and said, 
Miranda Moran and Marianne Morin will be removed from this meeting. We knew we had seven minutes and we hit that floor. And if you watch that video, it was exactly seven minutes. And the cops came. I want to say this. We got numbers, okay? <laughs> we got a lot of listeners. We got a lot of listeners out there. We have numbers. It is the Métis people that can make the change. And so you may have 14, 13 or 14 people who are supporting Goudon and these leaders, whatever. But we got thousands of people that can make a difference and make a change. And so we have to get Chartran out of there. We have to get Chartier out of there. And Will Goudon needs to resign right now. He is a disgrace to the Métis people. He didn't like the way that we expressed that in another video. But there is this thing called freedom of expression. But he tries to use the colonial process to try to silence the people he claims to represent. But I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is that um, um, Métis Nation Saskatchewan, after this MNLA occurred and stuff, um, they, they never want Will back again. So he's not allowed to chair any meetings. He's been, he, him and David came to a couple of uh, meetings that we had, but he's not allowed to chair any meetings anymore. Like the whole the whole organization just said we're done with those guys. Let me ask one more question here. Because uh, now, so I know originally it sounded like McCollum was supporting them. Uh, does McCollum no longer support Goudon and Char Chartran anymore? Well, you th like you have to know what the framework was about. So the framework was about um, MNC is going to receive all the money um, on behalf of every Métis person in Canada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so they all so they all let everyone believe that they were all like going to do this together, MMF and everybody. But once uh, MN MNS, MNA, and MNO found out uh, the scam, and it didn't take them long to find out. Um, that's when they all fractured away from um, um, MNC and MMF, right? Right. Because now they just want their own money for each province, right? Instead of it all going to MNC. So you're, you are correct. This is all about a gravy trade. It's all about making sure the government wanted this framework signed. If it's signed um, next year, as you can see for the MNLA that just passed in Saskatchewan, next year um, our all our executives get to make 150000 plus they can have a second job. So they could have a job at a mine making you know, another 150000 and that's going to be okay. Right. So that's what I'm saying is it's all set up this way because who's going to vote against them? And also there was also a gag order signed. Um, they call it a confidentiality agreement. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning it was signed and Rebecca Major, um, she was uh, part of the executive at the time and uh, that's when she spoke out and said, listen, I can't sign this because it will be going against my job um, that I was elected for to the people. Right. Right. So, so that's what I'm saying. It, it is a gravy train, and it's the only reason um, they're doing all this. It's the only reason they're being hateful and saying, "Oh, those people don't exist." And you know, it's it's the only reason they're being they're just um, government's puppet right now. We are, and, and you it's know, exactly why the First Nations uh, aren't aren't liking us right now either. Well, that's right. And you know what? The thing that bothers me too, uh, Miranda, and I know the, a lot of people see this too. And I mean, you see this on a continual, continual. Uh, basis, especially on Twitter, where you have uh, Will Goudon is continually, continually bashing uh, Métis uh, that are not within the blue blob fake homeland map and continually attacking because there are leg legitimate eastern metis i mean anybody with a brain in their head knows that and i mean to you know he's got his little gang of the usual suspects that uh spread his and it really is hate speech in my opinion yes. and discrimination mm -hmm. against eastern metis uh you know online bullying i mean that's a lasting intimidation, effect. Eh? intimidation and i mean yeah. As a, a minister in a, a Métis government, he shouldn't be allowed to, to you know, do that, uh, you know, online cyberbullying, saying that these people don't exist. And, and like I've said in previous shows, because uh, Minister Will Goudon is in my genealogy, his family, because we're related, you'd be surprised to see some of uh, uh, where his ancestors, his ancestors came from in the East. In the East. In, but, in the but, East. But, but, but hold on, I want to make it clear here. Because there is a lot of fake Métis in the East. There's a lot of people fraudulently. And the only reason we know this is because we've actually looked at this. <laughs> we've seen some genealogy where people are claiming to be Métis. And they're not Métis. And it has nothing to do with the homeland map. They're actually not Métis. 
but yet they're claiming to be Métis. And when we pressed them for their genealogy, uh, that came out. But however, you know, there is people that have genealogy that would show that they are Métis and they, they're from the East. And as Alexandria said, well, Will Goudon's family tree, because uh, he's in hers, uh, he actually has people in the East as well. But the point that I want to make, this is not about us sitting here trying to promote the East at all. What, what, what the point that you made earlier was what he did. Okay. Yeah. He said, there's no, no mate in the East. That's one thing, but then they got rid of the locals in Saskatchewan. Now I, I want to reiterate what you were saying earlier, because th when he starts eliminating Métis uh, and, and, and they're supposed to be in that bogus homeland map, when he starts eliminating the Métis there, that's all for financial reasons. Because the less people, the more money. And if I don't know if you've seen the video we did last year on the audit that MNC had where they were using different font types and stuff like that. We're going to re-upload that soon. But that was obviously... Yeah, I think I did see that, yeah. Yeah, that was obviously some shady stuff going down there. And so, uh, and we have access to some of their financials. Uh, and they know damn well we got them. And so... Uh, and it's just like some of the stuff that we put out before people are choosing not to see it because they get promised all this stuff and yet how many people are actually seeing things that's the question yeah yeah and that's just it like being bought bought off or whatever right and yeah and, and it's just and what i don't like about it is don't call it a democracy then don't call it a democracy because we've never talked about it we've never talked about the homeland map we've never talked about the eastern metis we've never um discussed don't call it a democracy if you're just going to go out there and unilaterally make decisions on behalf of all the people don't call it a democracy then call it what it is it's just a non-profit board that's that, what it is and it's a dictatorship it's a non-profit board yeah let me ask you this, Miranda. So don't call it a government. That's Al right. Alexandria, Miranda, Alexandria is a card-holding member of the MMF. We run a show, yeah. a show that fights corruption and asks for transparency, and we do it for the Métis. And so here's the thing. Why would Will Goudon, why would he go against a member of the MMF? Why would he attack her, the show, this fighting for transparency and against corruption and people have to ask themselves that why is he so against us but yet he'll go on these chapstick media shows and do interviews that that's that's the thing that really uh disappoints me and you know i think yeah, no, it's, it, it, and I, I think this i'm going to say a statement and I, I i truly believe it and this is my opinion it's really you know when the mmf the mnc blocks or tries to silence uh, its citizens from asking questions or criticizing how their government or uh, their organization or a nonprofit is is running on when they do it online or anywhere. Uh, anything, you know, if if anything, these organizations, nonprofits, lose all credibility and they're not accountable and they have no and no integrity because. Uh, Métis people really, I mean, we deserve honesty, dignity, uh, transparency, and accountability, and their attempts to silence us, I mean, like I said, I don't know what they're there for because, uh, you know, there there are the few uh, that are benefiting if you're in the, you know, their inner circle or if you're getting funding for this or that, uh, it keeps those people happy. But the people that are asking the questions, like you said, Clem didn't even read that framework he just signed it i mean uh, what the heck is that all about so you're just signing any piece of paper uh, as long as they're going to promise you millions and millions of dollars i mean that that's a scary year i mean there's no there's no collective because you're just having these entities signing we're, we're just numbers for funding the government's paying off these people in order to buy votes that's very clear and so they're giving certain people money and they, they letting them get away with a lot of corruption. But go ahead, Moran. Yeah, so and that's just it. it. This was a government agenda put in place, right? And um, you can read it, read. If, if you read, like, if you read up on Tom Isaac, you can see it. It was well put into place in Harper Times, right? Right. So all these policies then and motions that were made after are just, you know, to bring us closer to extinguishing our rights like getting rid of them right so right and 
And you know what, you know, Miranda, I mean, the listeners are Métis people across Canada. You have to see a pattern here. Uh, MMF Will Goudon uh, has been asked, uh, you know, they don't want him back in Saskatchewan. Uh, recent events and uh, the Métis Nation of BC, they didn't want him uh, chairing anything. I mean, you got you got to wonder why you've got uh, two two uh, organizations that no longer want Will Goudon to chair, obviously, for obviously for obvious reasons where he continually mistreats and uh, disrespects Métis women. They don't have a voice. They're being silenced. They're being intimidated and also doing that to Métis veterans. Yet you have the MMF uh, handing over these checks uh, to the Métis veterans and then you got Will Goudon that is disrespecting vet veterans. I mean, it's just like very hypocritical and then uh, how they treated Marianne Morin. I mean, there's no respect. I mean, she's the uh, treasurer of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan and letting her stand at a table. I mean, good God, and then trying to silence you, Miranda, and giving you that little symbol that he's got his eyes on you, trying to intimidate you. I mean, I, I would have done the same thing. I would have just looked at him and I would have started laughing or I, I would have made a clown face because, I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that's... Yeah, like, I just wanted, I wanted him to just go ballistic, and he did, right? So. Yeah. He didn't have all those dignitaries. This all happened, in, like, it was so embarrassing. Like, and I don't understand how it continued after that. Like, how then you had all these, like, government officials saying, yeah, these guys are good at what they do. Wow. You know, and the other thing that was brought up at the MNLA was, so there was a challenge, uh, a motion uh, challenge about Marianne's position, right? Because right. Everyone wanted to know, like, did she resign? So, and finally, it gets to the floor, and, uh, they call up a lawyer. They want a lawyer's opinion. So the lawyer they used, I'll have to get his name for you guys. The lawyer they used, um, if you look through our audited books, we owed that lawyer like something like 500000 that m and owed him that much money. <laughs> he gets up there and says, yeah, um, by the letter I have here, um, it looks to see like she resigned. So that's my lawyer opinion. She resigned. Oh and then my. they just moved on. Good God. So Marianne took it to court, as you all know. Yeah. She won her case. Um, the judge said, yes, she is the Métis treasurer, and uh, they still won't let her back at that table. Yeah, that, that, that's absolutely disgusting. And I mean, again, that's disrespect, intimidating, and not honoring somebody that has, you know, legally has that position as Métis Nation of Saskatchewan treasurer. I mean, that, that just yeah. boggles my mind. Like, uh, hello? Let me ask you this, I know, because... I just couldn't even believe what was happening. Like, it was just, it's unbelievable, so unbelievable that you wonder, how do the Métis people just accept this and, and are like, yeah, this is great, we love this. Like, I don't understand. So what is your candidate for president in Saskatchewan right now? Um, we have a couple of Clems running. Yeah. Clem is running in Saskatchewan. Glenn and Marianne so far right now, I think. Yeah. And uh, who do you think would be best serve the Métis people in Saskatchewan? Well, I think Marianne obviously would do a, a great job because she cares about the people, right, and about representing the people. Um, but with what you know, what's been put in place, um, I can tell you for sure, uh, Clem or Glenn will um, win. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, appalling that and Clem Sharkey. in place, like, like even with the registry, right? Like how we talk about the registry here in Saskatchewan is because the registry isn't really protected because only up until two weeks ago when I mentioned it, um, it wasn't being cross-referenced with INA to see if you already had a card. Good God. I um, think... Up until two weeks ago. Yeah. So then they started. Then they started running all these cards through INAC to see if you already have a card. But the problem with this is, is that it said if you, so if I want to register today, I can. I won't get my card, but I'll get a letter saying that I'm in the registration process. Right. I can use this letter now to go and vote because it'll say that I'm in the registration process. But the problem is, is after this election, when they run everyone's name through INAC, half of these people are already status. We know that from the north, right? Right. They already have status. And I'm not saying I don't want um, Bill C-31s, C-3s, and S-3s in the Métis box. I'm not saying that. But what I did say earlier to you two is that we've never discussed that. Right. And I, nation, right? I think... We've never discussed that. So how do we know if they're in or out? Same with the U.S. Do the 
U.S. Métis then get recognized by Canada? Well, I don't know. We've never discussed that. Should they? We, like, we don't even share lands and laws, right? Right. Let, let me ask... So, so this is what I'm saying is these discussions have never happened. And this is where you know for sure that the government's just... This is just a puppet game because they're giving them all this money to play this game. But really, in the end, um, this all falls apart because it cannot... Like how I said, I'm just a... a, a regular person i don't have any education in law or anything but if i can see the holes in it believe me someone a lot smarter than me is gonna um unravel this all exactly but here's the point that i like to get out there again we have the numbers they're gonna take notice and we can make change and we got support trust me there's a lot of people that are tired of the same old same old and so, and, and what we're going to be doing is putting together a website to help orchestrate and organize uh, things so that we can make sure there's transparency on elections. Because like, as you just said, in your point that you just made, obviously this is not going to be a, a, a legitimate election because they're, they're just telling everybody, uh, Clem Chartier is telling everybody, uh, self, self, uh, self-declare and go vote. And, and then at the end of the day... You'll all be able to vote. Everybody, even card carriers, First Nations, you can vote in our election this year. You guys should even try. I bet you they'd let you vote. Yeah. <laughs> and, then after, and then after the election, what they'll do is say, oh, well, sorry, some of you have a card. You won't be able to get a Métis card, or you're going to have to pick, right? Right. They're going to screw over the people. But they'll wait until after the election, because right now they can stack the election. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll get the numbers that they need and then worry about it after the election. And, you know, uh, that, that's just disgusting. And, you know, the thing that bothers me, even with the, the federal government, Carolyn Bennett, and I'm going to say that, too, is that when you have uh, uh, a white academic uh, that is being used by the MMF and MNC to, you know, per per perpetrate all this discrimination against Métis people, when you have someone like Carolyn Bennett following that person uh it, it really kind of sets the tone uh, on you know what, what's really going on where you know even the federal government is believing all this uh you know this white uh and i'm going to say it because they're a non-indigenous uh academic that's spreading uh discrimination all over social media mm -hmm. yeah and they support him and you know they support him because that's what they need right now the other thing though about him is he He's such a goof. Like, really? Where do you get purity out of Métis blood? Where are you going to get First Nation purity? You're not. See, this is a... And what other... What the listeners also need to know is this is also another... There's also an underlying fight going on right now. And we all know if you're in a Métis society. If you're not Christian enough, you're also on a, a different side, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So that's really it. Is we've got this, like... We've got these... Christian missionaries pushing for um, whatever government wants, because that's what they've always done since history, right? Right. Um, pushing for what government wants. But then you got, like, some of these sovereign Métis people who, like, grew up in the First Nations reserves. You know, you got some of these people who, like, are still connected in those ways. So that this underlying fight is also going on between, um, you know, uh, purity, and that would fall under Christianity also, right? Mm -hmm. uh, purity and Christianity. And then you got your sovereign um, treaty people that just want treaty rights. And I thought that's all Métis people wanted. Like for myself, all I wanted was not to be bothered when I'm out there hunting and fishing. That's it. Let me ask all you this, Miranda. What happened after they called the police money. on you? I didn't want money for lands. <laughs> what happened after they called the police yeah, on you? Like, that was so, I couldn't even believe that. And I was embarrassed. Um, I'm in, a, in that video, if you hear Marianne speaking, you can hear me actually cry. I'm crying. I'm talking to uh, Felix Morasti in the background. And I said, why did you say that? Why did you say that when you know it's not true? Mm -hmm. So as Marianne's talking in that video, Felix Morasti is actually talking with me and he actually tells me, I'm sorry, um, maybe I didn't see it correctly, and then he hugs me in front of everybody. A after he got up there and wanted, uh, and then, you kicked out. After he, right, yeah, after that. And then and then you hear me, now I'm mad, right, because you, you heard me at the end. Mm-hmm. 
So do we have the video of her shaking the cop's hand? I'm super mad now. Like I've come, I came to stick up for Métis people. That's it. That was my agenda. Right. I didn't know that I was going to have to take on the federal government. Because then Tom Isaac, after I embarrassed him, he comes and stands behind me too. Like these men were trying to intimidate me. Well, no kidding, because they they and I'm could five foot nothing. I'm just this little small girl, but I have a powerful voice. But that's right, because they couldn't control you. And uh, people in the MMF, MNC, and all these corrupt organizations are very fearful of people that they can't control. You know, by throwing money at them or whatever they do. And like I said, it's all about control. What people say. I mean, you know, you could you're saying something. I mean, who knows who could be hearing you? They don't want that out to the masses because for fear that you're going to start empowering people to ask these hard questions because everybody's afraid mm -hmm. and i see why i see why like if this was the tactic was being used i could see why if i was a weaker kind of woman i like that would have that would have broke me but but we got to look at the matey the way that this it's not to to bow down and just take it it's, it's actually to fight and so we have, have to, to resist it yeah, we have we have to do that, and the people have to come together. Are you not, why are you even calling yourself a Métis if you're just up there kissing Carolyn's butt? You know, like why why call yourself Métis? You're not even negotiating either. That's the thing; is just whatever's put on the table. They're like, well, yep, yeah, that's good enough. That's not good enough. Yeah, and so and and, and the kissing Will's butt, and the kissing Chartrand's butt, and the kissing Chartier's butt, and uh, and, and the problem is these people got to go. Because you need new blood in there. You need you need you need people who is actually going to do the right thing. There's been enough corruption, enough screwing of the Métis people. Now it's time to have leadership that's going to do the right thing. And and sadly, I, I feel like whoever gets in office, when they get access to all this money, the the temptation for corruption is there, which is very disheartening. You could take somebody who has the purest intentions. And then when they're looking at that temptation, you know, and that's why I was kind of hoping Chartier, Goudin, and, and, and Chartrand would reform because they've already done enough screwing of the Métis people. And instead, and no, they, they, they doubling down on, on the BS. And, and we need leadership that's going to fight uh, and do the right thing and be fair for the Métis people. Oh, yeah, and we definitely have needed that for a long time. And that's the thing, like, you know, I, I, we just can't get those people to even play in these politics, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Like, even for me, it's so hard to be even be in these politics when I don't need to be. Well, you know, well. There's you, nothing there for me, you know? You said they tried to intimidate you, and, and I believe that 100%, because Goudon's out there saying that we made a defamatory video on him. Now, he says that because he didn't like the delivery of the facts, the way that we express the actual facts. And he also says it because he's trying to convince people that he didn't do the things, even though we had the video in there, and even though we had his own words in there, and yet these 13 or 14 people want to believe him, and it puffs, up, puffs him up a little bit to where he's like, oh yeah, he, I don't know what he thinks he is, but... Uh, it's a shame, man. Well, you know, even like I said, the sad part is uh, Goudon has his clique of uh, dedicated followers that, you know, it's almost like the Pied Piper. It doesn't matter what he says or does, they're going to follow him to the end. And it's really sad. And you only hope one day that these people will truly wake up and see what's really right in front of their eyes. Because, I mean, Will Goudon really should resign. I mean, uh, he, there's no business. He was kicked out of Saskatchewan, kicked out of BC. They don't want him to share. I mean, again, there's a pattern. He needs to be kicked out of Manitoba, uh, for sure. And I mean, the, the thing that I noticed, too, is that in me speaking, myself speaking out on different topics, etc., uh, they are very, very afraid of powerful Métis Indigenous women who are using their voice. That is, they're very yeah. afraid of that. Yeah, and, and you can see that with the, the guy they hired there, like, you know, the LaRue guy who goes around and does that. It's and mostly women. We, it's mostly women that get attacked. Yeah, that's... And it's not just an attack by him. Like, he'll come in and... They've called me fake so many times. You know, I had to put my genealogy out there. <laughs> and after I put my genealogy on my Twitter, 20,000 people have looked at it. And since then, not one person has called me a fetus or a pretend Indian. Yeah. I mean, you shouldn't have to yeah, do that. It's people looked at it. No one questioned me after mm -hmm. that. 
You know, the funny thing but is... Why that, would I have to do that? Why should I have to do that? That's right. Right. And when they're telling people to self-declare for to public, an election... I but, have to publicize my genealogy for you to believe that that's who I am. Like, listen, my grandfather, like, he came right out of the bush in the bread. Got a house in Regina. Mm -hmm. He lived in a bush with 12 kids. He powdered his face every day and pretended he was a white guy. You gonna call him a race shifter because he wanted to fit into society and not be killed out there? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's no way that you should have a non-indigenous academic out there shooting their mouth off with fake propaganda. I mean, that that's absolutely disgusting. Because yes, our grandfathers and grandmothers used to powder their face. They used to pretend they were white. And yeah, they probably did write on genealogy. I'm a French Canadian because that was more acceptable for being a Métis or an Indigenous person in the times. Absolutely. I, I, I absolutely agree with that. There's a lot of people, their family, I mean, even myself growing up, I mean, uh, my parents didn't tell me I was Métis because they said they didn't, they were afraid that I would get teased at school. So they, uh, they always said that my grandfather was French. Right. My grandfather was so happy that I had blonde hair and white skin. You, you, he was like, you're going to have a great life up there. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's sad. And I mean, what's sadder again is, like I said, um, you know, these uh, corrupt, shady uh, individuals that call themselves leaders of these Métis organizations. They're the front, and you know, trying to silence, intimidate uh, people that are trying to seek truth. I mean, we we have every right to ask questions, and we have every right to get answers. And I mean, you know, the other thing about them, Alexander, mm -hmm. we don't provide proof exactly they just come out there and start calling someone a fetus and whatever but they never provide proof to what they're saying they did that to me and that's what i said well prove it prove i'm a fetus then right tell me where well you don't even have my genealogy they're just out there making up bullshit that's the thing and everyone's just following it and i don't understand what's going on listen if you don't bring proof then your argument's pretty much invalid the other thing for the Métis is we don't do what First Nations do. You can go to any First Nations reserve on the website and you can look at their genealogy. And you can see all the First Nations that are born on that reserve and all their family trees. So where is ours then for us to even say that to one another? Well, here's the thing. Again, we can't it, be it, saying that to each other about genealogy if we have no place to look it up. It, it all boils down to the financial greed. The less people, the more people they can convince the government that they're representing, the more money they get. But then when they turn around and it comes time to issue out the money, the more that they can say, hey, you're not Métis, then where is that money really going? Instead of it being well, divided fairly, it's well, just... that was my point with the pandemic money, right? Um, they got $7 million here in Saskatchewan, and we just all had an election not very long ago, right? Because we're coming up to a new one. So they had that voters list with everybody's name on there that would be the same people that could vote this time. Um, not everybody got help. No. Oh, that's not right. I mean, everybody should get help. I mean, they, they got enough money. Where in the hell did the money go? It's because they want you to get the card. You see, the government can't steal your rights unless you have a card. Well, some of us stayed sovereign the whole time, like myself. I never clicked the box. Mm -hmm. I knew who yeah. I was my whole life, but I never clicked the box. There's a lot of my... I had 102 cousins um, the last time I counted. So there's a lot of us that didn't click the box. We were told not to play with that organization by our grandparents. So even our grandparents knew they were shaky. Well, uh, since we're, uh, we're getting ready to run out of time here, is there any other things that... Because a lot of people are going to listen to this. Is, is there anything else that you would like to get through to the Métis people out there is going to be hearing this before we have to wrap it up? I think it's just time for unity for us and I think it's time to build the real relationships, you know, the real ones, the build on that and forget what this um, society is doing because like how we all said, we don't, no one likes it. You know, you guys wouldn't even have a show if uh, if it was going good, right? So nobody yeah. likes this. Like we need to start all getting together and uh, building something on that that's meaningful and that helps uh, real people, you know, like and and the children. Like that's all. Like you can even have you can have my Section Thirty Five rights if you promise to give it to Cindy Blackstock's kids. Mm-hmm. 
you know, there's but there's no negotiation, and that's what I want to see. I just I want to see the people come together, and you have to have unity, and you can't be dictators. You have to actually ask the hard questions out there, and have the real debates, which Métis are known for. Have the real debates on the floor, and then we'll decide if we win in the if we lose in the vote. Oh well, then I guess that's that's that. But at least we could accept it because it was a democracy. That's right. We've got to get rid of the uh, dictatorship and every person needs to have a, a seat at that table and every person has to have their voice heard. Yeah, yeah, even if you say no, just record that. I just want them to record that. Miranda Rand said no to Frank Yeah. Record that so my kids know and my grandkids know that. It's got to be fair and it's not fair. And that, yeah, it has and to it, be fair. And, you, and the point you made, our show came about because there was so much corruption out there. And if they really want, if Will Gudine wants to make us go away, the fastest way to make us go away is start doing the right thing and stop with the corruption. Because guess what? Yeah. That that puts our show out of business. We're no longer in business at that point. That's right. Now you can become a new show that just uh, has Métis, what the Métis are up to this month, right? <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we much rather yeah. do that. Trust me. We much rather do that than what we're doing because... As you know, doing the shows we do, we get attacked a lot by people uh, in, in leadership positions that we cover the stories on, and they're little chapstick groupies. And so, uh, you know, this is not a fun show to do by any means, but we felt obligated to do it because nobody else was stepping up on the scale and going after I mean, we know that Marianne Moore, yeah, she's fighting. We know that you, you, you're a fighter, but there's not a, a lot of media out there that's actually stepping up and asking the tough questions and that's why we had to we had to come into existence yeah, yeah and, it, and uh, you know everyone appreciates uh, your kind of show because you know you wouldn't know what's all going on without those kind of shows right and I mean corruption isn't pretty so I mean we're gonna present the facts and a lot of people that are resistant to change that are resistance uh, to truth are going to get offended because I mean they're in their own little clique it's like they're in a little bubble with the same people day after day attacking people this and that they don't want to and when somebody starts to come to attempt to burst that bubble they get upset they get frightened because change is very scary but I mean again corruption isn't pretty I mean we've asked Will Goodon uh, dozens of times to come on the show he won't even when we call he won't even pick up the phone I mean I, I'm a citizen of the MMF for God's sakes I mean have the courage or, or have the balls to come on and answer our questions I mean we'd give him that forum to answer the questions and let him speak but I mean he's a key in my opinion uh, Will Goodon uh, amongst many keyboard war Warrior. They're keyboard warriors. They hide behind their keyboard. Uh, they stir the pot. They stir up trouble. Saskatchewan, Alberta, all over the place. And then they walk away and let their little groupies uh, fight it out and attack people on social media. Yep. Right. Yeah. And there was a case. Like, I mean, um, they had a case, uh, MNF. Uh, they did a case without everybody knowing, I think, in 2016, you can look it up on Ken Lilly or whatever it is, um, and Jean Tillet was the lawyer for that, and if you look on that, um, the, the reason the Métis lost, we, like, we lost to this money thing of the land was um, because they were, in that court case, you, if you read it, um, Tom Isaac is in there, um, that Darren O'Toole guy, um, Jean Tillet and stuff, and they just made us sound like, um, well, they said some things in there that really like uh, took away from our land claims, like uh, that we're nomadic people, things like that, that we move around too much to claim land, things like that. That so that's what I'm. This is actually like running on these like court cases, right? Like because that um, Tom Isaac is trying to build law around it so that um, uh, Justin Trudeau gets his framework with certainty. Right. Certainty meaning that none of you can come back to court after. When it's done, it's done. That's right. When it's done, it's done. And Tom Isaac is writing the law as it as it's playing out. Yeah, I mean, so the, the... so like it, it is terrible. And the other thing you also need to know too about that Daryl uh, Larue is um, it's a big orchestrated thing. Like um, Kim Tallbear, she works for CBC, and she's also from the states, and uh, uh, she has a degree in con consciousness or something like that. Um, but her too. Uh, 
Uh, she works for CBC, so that's why we can't get any media. Yeah. Because um, so like even the government owns the media right now, right? Yeah, they own the media, and that's the thing. They can't control us, so what did they do? They tried to attack us and silence us in other ways, and so, uh, yeah, they, they definitely, I mean, like I, we call them the chapstick media, and that's what they are. It's absolutely. Well, it's true because, I mean, uh, they, you know, MMF, MNC, and all the corrupt people get to report the story their way, and it's always one-sided. So, I mean, I mean, people may not like our delivery or whatever, but, I mean, it's, we provide facts, truth. Uh, we always have everything backed up, and people are, are afraid of that because, in, in my opinion, uh, the MNC is really on the verge of crumbling. There's no doubt about it because... Uh, uh, they're they're gonna crumble and uh, like I said they're losing control over the money pot and the people because people are, are are hopefully are gonna be start waking up and that it, it's a real you know it's a threat to them really to uh, the money train there yeah yeah and that's why they wanted um, to, to own CFS like why they wanted to be in charge of like welfare and stuff it wasn't because they wanted to help the kids it's because well as you know in Manitoba they have um, uh, they have some Métis run uh, CFS, yes. but those are all making uh, media right now with APTN because they're doing it, they're stealing kids for no reasons, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I myself applied for uh, one of the uh, uh, child uh, agencies that is run by the Manitoba Métis Federation, and when I went into the interview, one of the, qu the first questions that they asked me in the interview is who I knew at the Manitoba Métis Federation, and it's like that they didn't you know they had all they didn't look at the qualifications or what have you the first question the interviewer asked well who are you affiliated with or related to at the manitoba metis federation so that was the tone of the interview for my job mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you know and that and that, that's why we've been resisting and speaking out is because like if we thought that it was bad for our people now um wait till after this is all done yeah yeah well, uh, Miranda, we'd like to thank you for joining our show, and you're invited back anytime. Or anybody that you know that wants to come on to the show, they can come on and speak, and uh, we're open. We're open to people that's wanting to speak out and speak for what's right and against what's wrong. And so uh, I think that your interview today will shine some light to the people out there. There's going to be those that just won't accept it, and, you know, there will be attempts to attack us on it but okay well uh thank you again you can contact us anytime it don't have to be for the show or whatever you can reach out to us so. like we really appreciate miranda and like i said our goal is to give a voice to any Ind indigenous metis person that doesn't have a voice that's what our aim is to give a voice and we really appreciate you coming on the show yeah thanks so much you guys great show so I can't wait to hear it after. <laughs> yeah. you, you were yeah. awesome. You rocked it. Like yeah. I said, we appreciate you. Thank you very much for taking time. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Have a good Talk day. Have guys. a good day and a good weekend. Take care. Thank yeah, you. you too. Bye-bye. 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 So that was Miranda Moran. Yes. And she is a warrior, a Métis warrior out there fighting against corruption. And, and uh, you just heard her story. And when I say Métis Warrior, don't link her with us. Don't say, oh, she's a part of that media group. No, there's there's people that fight against corruptions that are Métis and they're Métis Warriors, okay? So understand that. And it's important that every Métis woman, Indigenous woman, has a voice. And uh, uh, as you heard in the interview, I mean, good God, you had uh, Minister Will Goudon really totally disrespecting, mistreating her, and giving that little symbol where the two fingers looking at the eye, trying to intimidate Miranda at the Métis uh, Nation Legislative Assembly in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I mean, what a disgusting uh, that's really I, disgusting i want to make a point here for those of us for will Goudon and those of his chapstick groupies out there <clears throat> you might not like our delivery but once you accuse us of doing something that we have not done you then become liable and yeah and let me tell you we will proceed to the fullest extent of uh of taking it to the colonial systems 
that we can do because when you accuse us of defaming somebody you're actually slandering us you're defaming us and so i can't wait to get the youtube report back for the individual that that uh filed the uh the complaint on there and uh i can't wait to see who the individual or individuals was involved in that because you let me tell you something you involved in slander this ain't no kid's game where you go out there on social media and you make a little post and you walk away. No, we, we take what we do very seriously. And when you say that we defame somebody, well, in that video, we had nothing but facts. And we will be getting up our own website where we're going to have all of our shows on that website, too, because there's nothing going to stop the Métis Warrior Media Group. We're going to keep on. The only thing that can stop us is the end of corruption. So end the corruption. But I'm very curious for the people out there who's been posting on Will Gudar's wall, accusing us of slander, accusing us of defamation. You're in fact, fact are slandering us because when we, we present truth with evidence in it, in, the, in our shows, the actual evidence, when you lie and say we're being slanderous and defamatory, you have actually now committed a violation. Your violation is that you slandered us. And you, and you committed, uh, you defamed us. You, you committed defamation against us. Now, we really don't care about uh, a lot of the comments out there. But there's a couple of individuals, I can say about four individuals, that we've been screenshotting. We've been taking screenshots of all their comments. And they're going to be very surprised when they end up in court. And I just hope that Will Grudon was worth you losing everything in court. I just hope that he was worth it because you will lose everything when you go out there and you make fraudulent statements about us. Make sure you watch the shows before you go out there posting def defamatory and uh, slanderous remarks on us. And how I would like to close myself, myself as a card holding member of the Manitoba Metis Federation for over 15 years, uh, this statement rings true. Again, when the MMF and the MNC blocks its citizens from asking questions, criticizing their government online, anywhere, anything the Metis government says at that point has lost all credibility they are not accountable they have no integrity uh, the citizens and the members especially myself deserve honesty and dignity and trying to silence a Métis citizen that's not the way to go and you'll see a screenshot where I of course have been blocked from the Manitoba Métis Federation on Twitter to block a Métis citizen you're hiding something folks yeah, why would why would Gudana go against a member of the MMF? People ask yourself that. And actually watch our shows before you just listen to somebody's comment on Facebook or wherever about us. Because watch the shows. Because, again, we have freedom of expression. We can express the facts in the ways that we determine that we want to do it. But we do put the facts out there. And so uh, people that are slandering us, defaming us, are, are committing defamation against us. Yeah, you are wrong. And you could lose a lot in court, in civil court. You lose a lot. A lot of money. A lot of money. So I'd be very careful of the stuff you believe on Facebook. Take care, everybody.